Hi friends and welcome back to Jory with Jen and I am Jen and I'm so glad to be here. Happy Friday. Golly, I am so glad it is Friday. Let me tell you what a week I've had. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I am glad to put closure. It's just been one of those weeks <laughs> and getting into my weekend. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. I'm so glad that you've decided to spend some time with me on a Friday creating beauty. That's what we do. We create beautiful things with beautiful beads. <laughs> um, nothing much else to report, guys, uh, this week other than it's just been a long one and I'm exhausted um, and uh, ready to just totally relax with my beads. I have a really fun Friday frolic fun day project for us, guys. We are going to do something so beautiful. This should be really, really cool. And we are going to do something in my favor favorite color palette of blue, as many of you know. Um, I have a serious relationship with blue. Uh, we have been married for a very long time, and that cycle is not going to be broken anytime soon. Blue, all shades, all colors of blue, since I was, as far as long ago as I can remember, has always been my favorite color. I think my second favorite color is purple, but blue, blue, blue. And this uh, necklace really is just inspired by my favorite color, blue. So I want to do something different. So I'm not sure what we're going to name this necklace. We're going to be doing a double strand necklace. We are going to be using craft wire to make our own little swirly head pins as, or yeah, I guess you can call them head pins. Yeah, our own swirly, we're going to call them swirl head pins. That's what I'm calling them. Um, and we're putting some double chain together. I put a lot of it together because this is a little bit lengthy of a project. So I've put a uh, you know, probably a little more than half of it together, but don't worry if you're new and a beginner, fear not. Um, this is probably, I would say, an intermediate uh, technique once you get familiar with craft wire, but you can do it. Um, so guys, we are going to be putting a cool double chain uh, necklace together uh, with beading wire and making, like I said, our own little swirly eye pins, so, or head pins. So I don't know what we're gonna call this other than the design is kind of like that fan, those fan necklaces. There are so many names for these things, um, these type, these styles, excuse me. Um, so this is basically going to be like a fan, right? Um, you can call it a cascade. I don't think there's any one proper name. Um, but basically, all of my sections, each of my sections, are obviously um, going from the longest and then the shortest like this in the center. And then we're beating the side. We're going to add that right to our chain. That's what we're jumping into, guys. So happy Friday frolic. Grab your drink. Grab a glass of wine, a glass of water, a glass of Pepsi a glass of Sprite, a cup of tea, whatever floats your boat, <laughs> and join me while we have a beautiful Friday frolic fun day together. So let me tell you guys, what I'm basically using are some check glass beads and some rondelles. And then I threw in a couple of gemstones for good measure, <laughs> just because I think it looks pretty. You can use any beads you want. Um, I'm just going to kind of get into not only a relaxing design because like our goddess and the ladder and all those things, you really have to be present when you're working in this particular technique and this style, um, which I love. It just helps me to just be really present on the mat in the moment with my beads. Forget everything else. <laughs> um, so... My beads, guys, are these are four millimeter chuck glass, and they are in a rainbow of color. Um, I have them, as you can see, kind of, it's not really ombre, but they're kind of um, stacked, from, you know, like from lighter to darker shades of blue. 
And uh, so we've got the four millimeter um, in just a rainbow of blues. They all have a high gloss finish. Um, and then, and there's one, two, three different shades of those. And then we have five shades of the faceted rondelles. And the bottom one is a um, sapphire metallic. Um, the rest are just a, again, a mix of rondelles. This is like a cornflower. This is like a pretty baby blue. This is more of like an aqua. Um, this one is just like a true blue. Um, so we just have a beautiful color palette of blues. Then I grabbed some spacers, guys. And let me pull them up here for you and, and so you can see. So then I have these really cool like rondelle silver like spacers so we're going to put some of those in and then my opalite in the six millimeter and i do have these in my store i have this chain in my store uh the jump rings the clasp we're using all of that is in my store um if you're interested in maybe putting something similar together um so we've got those and um i'm just using guys the tiger tail also sitting in my store this is that beautiful royal blue. Now, if you got the Oceans last month's Rolling with the Ocean Tides bag, you got, I believe, this blue tiger tail. Uh, it's the 0.38 millimeter. This, that bag would be great for a project like this because you have some rondelles. You've got some chut glass. You, I believe, got some chain. You definitely got this tiger tail. So you've got some craft wire. Um, you can utilize a lot of those components in that Rolling with the Ocean Tides bag here. Or whatever you've got in your stash, guys. So that's what we've got. Let me jump into it and show you what I've already done. So what I've already done, guys, is I've just cut a very small, we're not doing much beading here. I've cut a very small, probably about a ruler length, about 12 inches worth of my wire. Okay. And then what I did is, let me show you, and I'm going to repeat the this on the other side. So if you're newer, um, you will see. All I've done is I then took and I crimped off, let me pull this way up for you. I crimped off one side. I did not use a wire guardian. Now I have some here on my tray, but I decided, you know, I think I'm not going to use the wire guardians. Let's eliminate them and this might lay a little cooler. Um, so anyway, um, we just crimped it and I made an extremely baby loop. You see how little my loop is there on my wire? And then I fed my chain on and crimped that right to my wire. Now, normally, of course, our, our wire guards, you know, take the wear and tear, but this one's for me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm okay with it. Um, not a big deal because it's such a little amount of beads that I have, if I have to restring it, not worried about it. Um, I also already cut my chain and finished off my chain. So what I did guys, it, and I also finished it at the back here with my, um, six millimeter jump ring and a lobster clasp on this side. I did four of the six millimeter jump rings just for a little chain extender because I intend to do some dangles on the back here. And then I basically just took my chain and I'm using the five millimeter curb chain. Um, and I just put it on the ruler and I cut the inside chain here to um, uh, 18 inches and the outside each piece. I cut... Um, seven inches and then just matched it up and cut it because the rest um it will be my wire to give me the length that i wanted and so it's going to be this cool situation of like a double strand chain there so that's all i've done so i've gotten all that prepared prepared that's the easy part and then i went ahead and crimped off as i just said one side and let me feed my tail back in here and fed the random little pattern I have on my first side here. And I'm going to clip that off to hold that in place. And all I did, guys, was I took the opalite and the silver spacers up here. And I just took three of the rondelles from the bottom and strung them on. And that's where we're at. Now we have these little baby chuck glass beads that are probably two millimeter. 
and they are in the most darling, like a sky blue. So what I'm going to do is we're using those and we'll feed those in between each of our components on the wire and then they'll they should lay pretty cool so then they don't lay if they're kind of just laying next to each other on the wire you know they might lay a little weird and the reason they might lay a little weird in this case is specifically because of that eight millimeter rondelle now if i had only just the six millimeters or the four millimeter check glass i could get away with probably stringing them right next to each other my components but that eight millimeter is going to prevent that so we'll put these little guys in between each component when we're feeding it on and then all i did guys is to cascade you're just going to lay out your beads and you can do this any way you want i have i think seven one two three four five seven components so my longest component is in the center and then i'm going to go up from there and you can actually do the opposite you can go um, longer to shorter as well so you can put your long um, components on the end and go shorter or however you want to do it so um, anyway what we're gonna do guys is I've got two of my components left to do here okay and let me move these guys up and so then all you'll need is some craft wire I'm using some uh, 20 22 I think I'm using 22 gauge here today um, you can use 24 22 20 gauge any wire that you're comfortable with you can use um, I would not go any thinner than a 24 gauge um, so 24 22 20 I think would be the go-to for making what we're doing and so let's jump into it guys I'm gonna pull you down to the mat so if you are new to making these little spiral situations then I am going to show you we've got two left to do here there's a couple of steps um, that are really important um, that we are going to get involved with in right now in order to make these but I have two left to make with you guys so um, you have two opportunities now <laughs> um, if you're new and are really interested um, so I always just warm up my wire a little bit guys um, and then I'm gonna pull you down to the mat in one second here so I just warm up my wire I also have my nylon jaw here um, in a case like this particular technique we definitely want nice straight wire and I'm gonna cut each of my components I did seven as I said um, each of them I've cut about a good seven to eight inch piece of wire okay so that's you know obviously you can cut smaller but if you cut a seven inch piece on your end you can probably get two components out of one piece so you just want to make sure you have enough so we can do our spiral and we can do our wire wrapping at the top um, so that's step one step two is we want to make sure that we're flush cut okay so this side is flush cut I'm not worried about that side we'll make that the top okay and now I'm gonna pull you guys down and adjust you all the way down to the mat so you can see just it oops sorry guys just exactly what I am doing okay so now what we're gonna do is we are going to do the first portion which is the spiral okay so you're gonna need your round nose and then some chain nose now let me get this out of the way um, and in fact let me get out of the way what we've already done so we have less stuff in our way okay so you're gonna need your chain nose or even some nylon jaw and then I would recommend grabbing some bent nose um, and you're gonna see why in a second so in order to start this out guys we cut our wire we know we have a flush cut right here you're gonna go right to the absolute tippy top of your round nose okay and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my round nose right at the end I have no wire sticking out okay and then I am going to turn this in and then I'm gonna 
open my pliers and I'm going to continue. And now while I'm pulling this wire, I want to pull it to the top of that spiral that I just made. So hopefully you can see what I am doing here. We're just going to keep going around really gently until we see the other side of that spiral. There it is right there. Do you see the tip of my spiral just came up, right? Because we want that on the inside. Now I am going to grab my chain nose and I am going to put my chain nose directly over that spiral. Make sure, see, mine just wanted to pop out. Let me get that started again better. Make sure that that's that end that we just started with right here is on the inside and now what we're going to do is we are going to hold our pliers over our portion that we just wrapped and now we're just going to start to twist our wrist as we feed the wire around in a spiral and we are just doing it very slowly and i'm just pressing very gently this wire in as I'm turning around and around, making sure that I'm going slow. And every time I'm pressing my wire down, it's laying on top. Okay, I'm going to stop right there and show you. So do you see what I have going on? And we're doing three spirals. I think I did three. I did three spirals. And you can do however many you want. Okay, now this is the second part of the spiral. Once I get to where that tip, where we started, the interior of our spiral, once that is facing up, I am going to stop. So that's what I'm looking for. So it's right there right now. Okay, let me get myself back organized. Okay, so I'll just keep pressing my wire as I'm, I'm opening and closing as I'm twisting it around, right? Very sl uh, slowly, very gently. spiral is just about that inside it's just about coming to the top it's just about there okay and now do you see what I have here do you see how the inside of my spiral is facing up okay that's where now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some bent nose and I am going to now take my bent nose put it over the long piece of my wire here i'm gonna go down to the very tip of my plier all the way to the tip of the wire right on top of where that is you see where my spiral on the inside is right and i am going to put a nice bend upwards just like that just i just bent my wire up right and so you see now how that has basically my wire or my little spiral centered now that's what I've got okay now what I'm gonna do guys is we are gonna work hard so I'm gonna take my chain nose and I am gonna tap it over many many times probably 20 30 However many I feel like, because the more we work hard the wire, the stiffer it's going to become, right? And that's what I want. So when we do this to our wire, when we work hard it, it makes the wire harder or stiffer than what you started with. Okay, so that made that much more um, stiff for me, okay? And now that I've done that, I'm going to change hands. I'm going to put that spiral inside my chain nose, grip it really well, 
And now I'm going to grab my nylon jaw and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to straighten out my wire. Just because in a project like this, you kind of need your wire to be straight. Okay, and if you want to do it with your fingers, you can do that too. Okay, and let me just go back and look and make sure that my spiral looks the way I want it to, and it does. And now I will just go ahead and I'm going to feed on my beads. Okay, I got my beads on. Okay, and now this is what I have. Now, if we need to move, which we're gonna have to, this is normal, that's fine. Because wire tends to want to move as you're working with it. So I like to kind of move it like this as I go. Make sure it's nice and straight. I'm holding that spiral that I've already made down there so I don't disturb all that work. Okay. Now, the next part of making our spiral HUD pun is we are going to make the smallest loop that we can and do a clean wire wrap on the top. But we want our loop to be going this way. And that's because our spiral is going this way. We want this to be the front, right? So you don't want it to be like this. You want it to be like that. So in order to do that, I'm going to make sure that my spiral is facing me just like this to make my loop. Now, we still can go back and twist them, right, which is fine. But to get it as close as I can, I like to kind of try to lay it flat right in front of me like that. And then I just have my chain nose, again, right at the end of my wire, right on top of that bead, because we don't need much. And I just make my right bend, pull that wire in front of me, in front of my tool, move my tool away from me, and now push that wire behind. And now I will grab my chain nose, put it over my loop, and I'm gonna do three clean wraps. So there's one, two, three. And then I will clip that excess. And then we'll tuck that in. Okay, and same thing, we'll work hard that loop. So we'll go with our chain nose. We'll go around just like this, tap, 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 tap. That helps to work hard it and to go ahead and center your loop. It's just all around good. Now what I'll do and you want this, in this particular technique, guys, we want to turn our loops before we get them strung on. So if I lay this down and I have my spiral facing towards me, I'm wanting to make sure, I'm going to pull you way down so you can see that. I'm wanting to make sure that my loop, my spiral is facing the way it would on the necklace and my loop is go is straight the opposite direction to feed right on the wire and it pretty much is it's pretty good there can also now take and you know straighten out your wire if you need to
any adjustments we need to do, we need to do them now in this particular style. So if I need to turn my loops, I've got you panned way down here. I'm going to put my chain nose over my spiral. I will grab another pair of chain nose and put them over that loop. and just twist them. And if they're good, they're good. If they're not, then just keep adjusting until it is. But I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So this component is done. So let me pull you up a little bit more here. And let's go ahead and do our final spiral. So I don't know that I can get enough out of this piece of wire. It's a scrap, but I will not throw it away. I never throw away my scraps, but I will grab another piece of wire. And I do tend to, you know, keep it on the spool and you know, straighten it on the spool before I cut my piece. It's just a nice habit because you've already got um, the grip of your spool holding your wires. You get a nice amount of tension there and a nice straight, a nice um, grip on your straightening. And uh, once again, flush cut that. Okay, make sure that's flush there, and let's get you adjusted, and we'll do that one more time. Make sure you can see just what I'm doing. So our first thing is, guys, is we start with our round nose, and what we're going to do is we're going to put our chain nose right at the end of that wire. We don't want anything sticking up, almost to the edge. And we're going to go to the right, open and keep twirling around. Again, making sure that as you're twirling, that where you started is at the bottom and you're wrapping your wire above it. So you want to be wrapping towards the top. And just do that until you see right there where you started you can see where you started it's right there and now we can pull our round nose out okay and now we'll grab our chain nose we will smush it and by smushing it it just forced my uh, little where we just start it just forced it to the inside okay and so now we're going to go ahead and put our chain nose over our wire and we're going to just start gently rotating just like this, pushing our wire very gently with this hand. I'm pushing my wire in a circle, laying each wrap over the previous wrap and I'm going very slowly, as you can see. Very slow, gentle motions. Every time I go like this, I open my plier and put it back over my spiral. And each wrap, I'm just pressing it very gently with my left hand here over the previous wrap. And I'm going to stop doing this when I get to three and the center of my spiral is facing towards the top of my finger there. Okay, so I'm on my third spiral now. And here comes the inside right there. And there it is. 
Okay, can you guys see that? The inside of my spiral is right there. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and before we put our bend and all that in it, we're gonna go ahead and work hard, half hard, call it whatever you want, your wire by putting your uh, pliers in. You can use any pliers that you have. We're just, all I'm doing is just literally tapping, just tapping. And that's making that nice and um, firm and stiff. Stiffer than what I started with. That's exactly what I want. Yeah, much better. And you see how it's come separated just a smidge here? That's okay. We're just going to go ahead right now and we're going to pull that wire in and put it back where it belongs. Okay, and so now this is what we have. Okay, and we work hardened, so we're nice and firm, and our spiral right here is facing it's right here, so it's basically almost centered with our wire right now. And I'm going to grab my bent nose now, and I'm going to put the very tip of my plier right at the bottom of this wire and directly above where that interior portion of my spiral started. And I'm just going to give it a slight little bend, just like that. I just slightly bent it. As you just saw. And now that is what we have. And pretty much that spiral on the inside is even with this bend towards the center of my wire. And this time we have a nice straight wire. We don't have to straighten that again. So that's, we can skip that step. And that's what we've got, guys. Okay. So I'm going to pan you up a little bit. And that is how you make spiral little head pins. It's so cool, guys. So cool. I'm just going to feed on my beads. Such a cool thing, guys. Very, very easy. Um, you know, and I say that with, you know, um, perspective. You know, once you start getting really comfortable with your wire and working with your wire, that's when, you know, starting to really work with the wire becomes much easier and less invasive, less um, intimidating. You know, just stick with it, guys. You'll get it. You'll get there. Just like I did. You know, I'm not, you know, an expert wire anything by any means. But, you know, I can do what I need to do. <laughs> you know, and guess what? It took me a minute to get there. Um, as with anything, practice makes perfect. So just, you know, hang in there, guys. And, you know, hopefully these tutorials are not only inspiring you, but I'm hoping you're also learning something. <laughs> because that's the best gift is to pay forward and let help somebody else you know, learn something. That's how awesome is that to share your skills. You know, that's what I love. So once again, guys, back to going to do my wire wrap. And so once again, I've got my spiral facing me just like it's going to hang on my necklace. And I'm right on top of my beads and I'm pretty close to the edge of my plier. And now I will make my right angle and then pull that wire around my plier, move my plier away out of my way away from me, push that wire to the back. And now I will grab a pair of pliers, put it over my loop, and I want to do three clean wraps. So we've got one, two, three. And 
I'll go ahead and trim my excess. Never get rid of your scraps, guys. You can do all kind of things. Make some dangles. You can do all kind of things with those larger scraps of wire. Tuck in my little burr. And now you see how my loop is. I'm going to kind of straighten that out now. And so I'm going to just put my round nose inside that loop. And I'm going to push him in. And oh, see what I just did? I just pulled and pulled my loop, pulled my spiral out of commission. See, I'm so glad these things happen when I'm taping. So very easy fix, guys. I'm going to go with my chain nose, go around, and I'm just going to force that right back where he needs to be. Put you right back where you belong there, guy. And then I'll grab my bent nose, and I'll put that slight little bend in my wire. To get that centered. And continue to push that around. I'm going to work hard that some more. Apparently it wasn't enough. But if that happens, super easy fix, guys. Just like you saw me do. Now it's just wire. Not a big deal. Has a mind of its own, but we can work with it. That is for sure. And now I shall hold that, and my loop actually looks really near perfect on this one. I think I did that right. Well, that's fantastico. Excellent. We're done with our round nose now, and I'm going to put it again back on the mat. I'm going to push you way down so you can see what I've got there. So I have my spiral facing up so that's going to be on the outside of our necklace and then you have my loop up here and it's going the opposite direction right to feed correctly on the wire so that's what we've got guys that's the hardest part and then basically you're just going to do that seven times <laughs> so um i think all we need now let me get some things out the ways here we don't need that. We are certainly done with that. We are certainly done with a wire. And I think we just need to crimp now. When we're done with our round nose. We just need to crimp and we just, I think, need some cutters and some pliers. And so let's go ahead and line up our um, necklace in the correct order that we need to be feeding it on. So I know I have my largest there and then I have three and then two and then one. And that's what we've got. And I'm going to actually feed these on in a specific way. So do you see how my spiral goes like this? So I'm going to feed these on where my spiral is going like that because, you know, you can turn it the other way and the spiral will be going that way. So I'm going to be doing this side where the spirals are coming in and then I'm going to land the abs actual opposite way on this side where the spirals are coming in. So that should look kind of cool. And when I'm laying them down here, each of them, I'm just going to double check my loops. I'm actually not feeling that one. I think it needs to be 
adjust and let me see here. Yes, it does. It's just off a smidge, but a smidge is a smidge. Okay, so that will go that way, and that way, and that way. And it doesn't matter with the center, so long as my loops are the opposite way. And see, this one is not either, it needs to be turned. So we just grab them and turn them. <clears throat> okay guys and now back to what we're doing on this portion so now guys all i'm gonna do is repeat my pattern after i feed these on um the exact way i did over here so we are gonna first get these guys on and then i'm gonna go ahead and put a little check glass in between and so i've got one here already and so now I am going to string this on. So if I string you on like that, let me just make sure. Yep, your spiral is going the way I want you to. And then a check glass. And then I want the spiral that way. And you can do this however you want. This is just a design. I just thought it might look cool. This is just design preference. And then the third one goes on that way. So yeah, so we don't need big loops. As you can tell, guys, we're just feeding it on the beading wire. So as small as the loop that you can make, the better off you are. So, and it's with these little check glass in between, is actually going to... It's just going to drape and swing really cool. And so then now we have our big guy here in the middle. And now I want to go the opposite. So I'm going to go this way. I have been wanting to make this necklace for so long. I am so glad I finally took the time. So I hope you guys are enjoying. Like I said, you know, there's lots of different names for this particular style. I'm calling it my fan necklace. Um, I'll think of a better name. <laughs> I guess. So let me pull you down now, guys. I'm going to actually pull you down. And do you, I want to show you if I need to make any adjustments, now's the time to do it before we tighten it up, right? So I'm going to pull you down and show you what I've got. I'm going to pull this over. And let me get that back in there. And let me also put my little stopper on it there. Okay, so this is what we've got, guys. Okay. And so I can see, do you see what I meant about the way my spirals are going this way? And on this side, they're going that way. Now, still, what I can see, probably the same thing you can see, it's my center. So it's strung on, but it's not laying the way it needs to. It needs to be laying this way, which means I need to adjust that loop, right? And that's what I wanted to put you way down so that you could see what we got going on here. So I'm just going to make a quick adjustment. The rest of them are laying just perfectly, just fantastic. But that center one, he's not happy. So I'm going to move this down and I'll grab my pliers. I can pull you up now. And I'll just do what we were just doing. 
I will move them away from everybody else. And I guess I'll grab the smaller chain nose up here, or bent nose, and then let me just try to move him a little bit and see if did that help. Yep, that's, I think so. Yep, I think so, guys. Holding it pretty tight there. And the other thing I want to show you guys, let me pull you down to show you, is the reason I chose these two millimeter chat glass, you can use seed beads or anything small, smaller than three millimeter, which is to say <laughs> not a three millimeter it, but again, this depends on the size loop you made. I made super tiny loops. So if you make a little a bigger of a loop, you know, you can use a three millimeter. It, maybe you want to make an even bigger loop, use a four millimeter spacer, whatever, you know, again, let me pull out, you know, spacer beads, right? Seed beads, spacer beads. These are three millimeter, you know, whatever you've got. These are, are um, these are some 11 O's. All right, some Toho Levinos. Um, I could have used them here, but I would have used quite a few. And why, the reason I didn't is because my loops may still have slid back and forth over the Levinos, and I did not want that. That's not for the style. I want them, each component is separate of each other. And so I wanted to show you, I made that small little adjustment there in that center strand here. Right, and now it is, I'm holding it tight. And so my uh, check glass up here are preventing anything from buckling. They're all laying next to each other. So I wanna give you guys a nice, good close up look so you can see what's basically happening here. And that's what we've got. It's just, it's just really cool, really cool look. So we'll just pull you up here and let's uh, finish it off. So I'm just gonna repeat my pattern. Since you just wanna keep doing that, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cut you. Cause you don't seem to wanna stay in that little rondelle. <laughs> I'm over you. Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to continue now, and I did end with a check glass, so I'll just repeat the same pattern that I have on the other side. And I also already pre-made a couple dangles here of some pretty blue beads. We'll see what we are going to use, what we don't. These are kind of more like on the green side, actually. And my ball and head pen got apparently caught in that. Okay, come apart. Those have a little bit of green to them. They're really pretty. So that's what those are. I think I only need two of each color. And I need five opalites. And I think I need three spacers. One, two, three. Yeah. So I did an opalite. Just string my little pattern on the same way. These cool little spacers. And then another opalite.
and I'm finishing it with a check glass because the spacers, the hole is too big, right? And I don't want my crimp to fall through whilst we are making our itsy bitsy teeny tiny loop. So these little check glass on top, perfection. So now I am going to grab my chain that I've already got all connected over here. So it's going to be this guy. That's why I've already put all that together and pre-connected it, so we're good to go. Do I need to grab another crimp? It appears I might. I thought I had some more crimps there. Apparently not. So I'll feed a crimp on, guys. And then now I'm going to feed the last link of my chain on right on my wire. I'll go around my chain and back through my crimp and probably three, four beads here. So before I do that, let me tighten this back up over here. And we are going to want to make sure that we are um, laying our necklace out just like this, like in a half circle, like we normally do to finish it off, right? So that way, this is how it will lay on the body and everything is hunky-dory just where it needs to be. So we have movement. I am going to put this tail through several of my beads i'm going to be real mindful i think i'll stop right at that first rondo and now i'm going to be quite mindful about the size loop that i'm making i'm going to try to match it up to the other side and let me take a quick look and see super tiny loop so I'll pull you down so you can see what I'm doing there. So I've got a very, very small loop on that other side. So we are just going to let him hang the way he should. Lay there nicely. And I'm just going to pull that a little bit more. Of my crimp and that is literally a pretty small loop you see that my blue wire how small my loop is that's all we need tiny tiny loop but still cool because you can see the blue wire hence I use the opalite beads because as you can see it's up close right you can see the blue wire through the opalite beads. Too cool. Too cool for school. <laughs> I'm too cool for school, guys. And I'll just do a simple crimp here. Simple standard crimp. I'll flush cut that off. And I just want to pull that up and show you what I've got there. Well, I've got you down on the mat. And that's what we've got. And that's what we've got there. So pretty. I'll pull you back up and show you what we made. And thank you guys so much for joining. Oh, I forgot. I forgot I was doing dangles. And I've already got them all made. So I think I want to do, let's do, maybe we're going to do one of each. 
I've already made them on a ball and head pin, guys, so no biggie. Just stick them on here. Uh, let's see here. And I can also put them on my chain because it's five millimeters, so. Tomato, tomato. I think I'm gonna put it on the last link. These are stainless steel ball and um, head pens that I used. So they're a little, a little stronger than the others. So that should be nice and secure there. Okay, so there's my little dangles. And we're all done. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed Friday Frolic Fun Days Project. So loved this. I, oh my gosh, you guys, have been, like I said, I've been wanting to do this for so long. I'm so glad. And I can absolutely, and here's another thing I love about this curb chain, even though I made my little jump ring extender, is that you can actually put, I can attach this even to my chain. I actually only needed one jump ring to hold my chain together and I can use, you can use, um, uh, excuse me, you can use your, if you're using like uh, at least four or five millimeter curb chain, you can use, or any link chain really, you can actually use the chain to connect your clasp, which is just cool as a cucumber. So that's what it'll look like on the back of my neck. That looks super duper adorable. And this is what we've got. Let me get it all untwisted. And that's what we've got, guys. With my dangle. That is what we've got. I think that, have I got all that in camera for you? I think I do. Think I do. So that's what we've got. My gorgeous fan blue necklace. Oh, you do, you guys just don't even understand how accomplished I feel right now. <laughs> I literally feel so accomplished. I've been wanting this is this project has been sitting on my desk for two and a half months. <laughs> literally since truly the beginning of summer like I've been trying to put this necklace together for two and a half months and I just like I just keep you know pushing it out and putting other things in front of it and I'm like okay that's enough <laughs> you need to be made <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy thank you guys so much for joining me don't forget to hit the like and give me uh, your guys's feedback what do you think um you know do you 
enjoy? Um, did you enjoy? Do you like it? You know, let me know what you guys think. I always love, love, love to hear from you guys. Um, and thank you guys so much for supporting um, my channel and me. And I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. And we will see you guys in the next video. Until next time, friends, be blessed.